Regarde! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we are working on a Damascus steel rapier. We're trying to make something great. We're trying to learn a lot along the way. I'm sharing this journey with you, so I very much hope that you're enjoying it. And I very much hope that you enjoy today's episode because we have an African blackwood handle that we're working on. It's very thick and chunky. We've got to work on bringing it down so it's very nice to hold. And then there's a lot of extra special, special fun stuff that I want to do to it to really make this piece shine. First step, we go back into the grinding room. I think we're gonna go to 60 grit, and we're gonna start thinning this down. I'd like to keep it convex. We may go concave. We will find out shortly as we begin developing this handle so it has a good grip. We will also, a little later, have to move the basket around so we have a little more clearance. But meanwhile, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, it's a little better. Hey, that's, once this guard's out of the way, ugh, let me pull both of these off. Oh yeah, once that guard's out of the way, I like that. Okay, that's thicker than I was expecting we'd make it. We can work with that. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna set my scribe a little lower since part of that was we slipped. But slipping actually made it work out well, so we're gonna now scribe gently this time the whole way around at uh, 625 thou. Now instead of our apex being 1.3 inches and then one inch, it's now 625 thou. So it's the five eighths of an inch, about 15 mil or so. Now, now that you have a look at the end here, you'll see that of course all our corners are proud of the actual diameter that we've scribed. I want to work to the scribe line. That's gonna leave this just a smidge proud and then we're gonna be able to uh, heirloom fit it so it'll just roll over slightly and nicely flow into that little bolster piece we've of course don't have anything proper on the back end to work to we're gonna be shaping the pommel to suit that at the grinder for now however what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this which is at 60 grit we're gonna make it 120 grit and then with the 120 grit belts we're gonna take off these corners and start going from now we have eight sides to 16 sides to 32 sides and then, probably from 16 sides, to be, to be completely frank, we'll move to 240. And then we'll be able to uh, step it up from there and start getting a very nice finish on the piece. I've got to be super gentle with this. 120 grit belt still cut a lot. There we go, got it on that side. About 32 sides or so. Good enough to be... Uh, Probably finished by hand, actually. Now I'm going to come to this side, set the diagonals off again. Trouble I just had is I got the ends good, but I didn't touch the middles enough. So now I'm going to take the corners off the middle. All right, we now turn the grinder around so we have the slack belt. That's going to conform nicely to our convex. You've got to be careful, though. i got to be careful. I'm the one working on this but I don't push too hard. Otherwise, it's gonna eat away at the ends and not enough at the middle. So I gotta take it nice and easy. 240 grit. Remember to sign up on the uh, email list for the grinders. I'll put a link below. This is the grinder I use. It's a two by 48 belt. I absolutely love it. It's made in Australia. It's super duper useful. The way that you can adjust the platen, flip it around for a slack belt, use all these wheels. It has some fantastic attachments, just love it. It's compact, but its compactness does not at all affect its performance. Even though it's a 48 inch belt, this thing tears through steel. The belt shortness isn't an issue like I ever thought it would be when I first used one. And instead it means that what would be a setup out here in your shop is back here. I absolutely love it, compact. Super powerful with even just a one and a half horse motor and it's just brilliant. Now I sold a few of these a few months back and again, we're gonna be putting up a seriously, seriously limited number of them for sale. And as you'll remember, those of you that were trying to get one a few months back, we're gonna do that via an email that I'm gonna send when it's ready to launch. So there's a link in the description so you can go to my website, you can put your email in and I'm gonna shoot an email probably in the next day or two with a link to where it is that you can buy one of the extraordinarily limited number that we have. Depending on how that goes, we might get some more. So if you're interested, make sure that you hit that link up below. Send me your email. I'm not gonna spam you with emails. I'm only gonna send you emails for super duper important stuff like that grinder. I'm just gonna work it all the way around nice and evenly. Well, 
Let's go ahead and throw a 320 grit on. And we start moving up. Goodness, that is beautiful! <laughs> oh my goodness! The back of the belt buffs stuff really well. There we go. African blackwood. It's looking beautiful. Uh, you wanna know how I buffed it? I turned a Trizac belt inside out. This is probably the nicest finish that I've ever done on any handle. It goes on beautiful fit. It's gonna be perfect for an heirloom. And I'm, it's just beautiful. Have a look at this. I just cannot believe how beautiful that is. I'm super, super happy. This really is just fabulous. And <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so pleased I took all that time to prep for this. I'm so pleased it has a good fit on the tang. I'm so pleased that we're gonna have two pins in the backside and just overall thrilled. The more effort you put into something, the better it turns out. I'm a little concerned about the next step though. So what I'm very nervous about is that I don't want this to just be that. This would make a beautiful handle, and it already is so beautiful. But this whole time, the idea that's been in my head is to do a little bit, 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 a little bit of a quillion handle. Now, a quick Google search will show us kind of roughly the idea of what a quillion handle is. Basic idea, not quite what it is I want to go for. But the fun thing is, twisted silver wrap on the peaks of the quillions. Now, what better way to annoy people that don't like 20-part series on YouTubes than for us to try something so ridiculously difficult and complicated when I could just leave it as is and it would be beautiful and stunning and still the best finish handle I've ever made. Why would I at all want to attempt this? I don't know. I could mess it up so badly. I'd have to start again. I'm gonna be somebody someday. Do, 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 do. One of these days I'm gonna break these chains. All right, so I've done a little outline of our handle there. Let me show you this. This is Julian Autunes. He is a bladesmith in Brazil. He works with crazy limited tools, but his work is unbelievable. Unbelievable work. Seriously talented. I take a huge amount of inspiration. I get very inspired seeing the stuff that he does. So he recently did something like what I want to do on this handle, on a handle of one of his daggers. Now thankfully I have access to a little behind the scenes there, because he very kindly uh, sent me a little video of how he had it set up before he filed it. Yes, that's right. He used a file for this. And I've got to too. Yes, with a file, somehow I have to make neat flutes looking beautiful and perfect the whole way up this thing. This is an endeavor. This is a very, 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 very difficult endeavor. You know, the, uh, the silver lining to the cloud that is this endeavor is succeed or fail. I'm, I'm gonna learn a lot. And uh, succeed or fail. Probably gonna be pretty pleased that I tried something really way out of my comfort zone. A huge amount of this project has been way out of my comfort zone. I may as well continue along that exact same path and keep this way out of my comfort zone. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work out how many flutes we're gonna put on it. And once we got that worked out, we can then start marking it out with a Sharpie. Right, I've decided more flutes, mo better! We are doing eight flutes instead of the six. It's gonna be an octagon instead of a hexagon. And I believe it's gonna look beautiful because I believe they're gonna look tighter at the bottom and more open at the top. It should be very interesting. I'm very excited. We now gonna lay out the lines on this accurately. How? I have no idea. You want to know why you need to be following me on Instagram, at Alex Steele? Fun little things like this. First person who can guess exactly what this is for, I'll send you a t-shirt for free. Now, of course, you could have bought a t-shirt. You could also be following me on Instagram, which you should do anyway. This tool, oh no, it didn't make it thin enough, did I? Didn't quite fit. So anyway, what I was saying is this is a tool for us to be able to hold this 
flat against this surface here. It's also going to be used a little later on for us to hold it in a vise as we file it. This goes in here, this goes in there, and it doesn't fit. <sighs> I'm, I'm very silly, I did not account for that thickness. Back to the lathe! Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> this is going to allow us to hold it perfectly parallel to this granite plate because this is a 90 degree thing. I really, I am so hilariously bad at this. I should have just taken a measurement because now I've got to go back in the lathe another time because I, I didn't go far enough. And now, 638th time lucky, we have a finally long enough piece. That took some doing. We'll now do is put some washers on. Might as well uh, throw a nut on it. Now, it's held perfectly flat against that flat milled end, which is square to everything, which is great. And what we're now going to do is we'll come down with this. Very accurate. Sharpie on a stick. We'll find all the marks that we marked out with the Sharpie a little bit earlier, and this doesn't go down low enough. So, 639th time. Lucky we can now hold this. Perfectly horizontal. Take this. Find the mark here, scribe all the way across, readjust, find the mark, scribe all the way across. Perfect. It's going to have to be a case of eyeballing it in. I figure we can get it decently accurate, at least close enough what we need. I'm also going to degrease this because I've got oil on my hands, so it's going to make it difficult to see anything. I've just realized that this hasn't worked. It, it has not worked. It is going to be difficult for the camera to pick up the lines. It's actually difficult if the camera won't focus. But I don't think it's worked, because I was doing multiple lines on the same turn, and it wasn't held perfectly 90 degrees on each one, which means that it looks straight and evenly divided in some places, but in other places, well, it's, it's straight, but only when it's at a specific angle. This line here looks straight at that angle, but you hold it straight, and it's, it's bent. It's bent to the contour of the piece. So this whole setup didn't really work that well. The best thing, really, would be an octagonal collet block, because then I could take this, mount this in a collet block, and then simply turn the collet block and have this set at a specific place, and that would be great. But I don't have an octagonal collet block. I've only got a hexagonal collet block. I've got a square collet block and a V block. That could maybe do it. Maybe, maybe, potentially, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I think this has worked. And by goodness, I think this has worked beautifully. Holy moly, yes! So I did the diagonals like this, and shockingly, this on the diagonal is, it actually has the exact same center as on the square in this particular V block. So we got super duper lucky, because now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Watch my watsets. They don't look super even. Oh no, they don't look very even. I'm not particularly sure if they are actually all even. So maybe something went wrong in my setup. I tried to make sure that this was centered onto that bar, so hopefully our centers are good. But uh, maybe there's another problem with this that I'm not thinking about, that, I'm, that I've not quite gas grasped in my head. So I'm gonna see if... Uh, I'm gonna see if it divides evenly on the end anyway. Or it's just a little bit of like an optical illusion. You know, the angles could all be good, and it still do something weird on me. <sighs> of course. Since this isn't round, it's impossible for me to use angles to accurately mark out eight sides across the whole thing. Because I'm relying on angles to set it up where that's not how it's going to look right. Because if the angles are right, that doesn't correspond to an even gap. Because something or other. Because the way our eye looks at it, as I said, something or other. Huh. Maybe if I was to do it again, but make sure this is a little squarer to the fixture, we'd be, we'd be good to roll. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So, this is just a little bit twisted to the fixture, which I think is making the perspective look weird, because we're expecting the center line to be in the middle, but it's actually not in the middle, so it just all, everything looks off and cramped. And though angles shouldn't be the best way to lay out a tapering oval, that tapers in two directions. I, I just want to try one more time with this method because I think this could be the best thing that I have, the best way I have available to me other than just putting a ruler on it. Let me just try this, let me try this, let me square this up. Nope, not good enough. Gonna have to rely on something else. This is not adequate, gotta do better.
There we go. We have it marked out, and I think this was indeed the best way of doing it. We ended up going all the way from using a height gauge with an angle plate to using V blocks and collets and holy gracamole. We ended up using a piece of cardboard and a sharpie. That's a that's a little ironic, isn't it? So now the next step is for us to mark all the way around from corner to corner, and that's gonna be what we're gonna file. What I can now do is that we can freehand corner to corner very slowly, very gently, and make our spiral. It is taking a very long time indeed. We still have to move that hilt around, obviously, as I've explained, but we're making great progress. I have been terrified about the prospect of making a fluted handle like this. We've got eight flutes. We've been using a six millimeter chainsaw file. It's been going marvelously. Top tip, when your files gum up, which they do, you get about one stroke on an individual bit of the file and it gums up because it's such a fine tooth, put it in some purple engine degreaser cleans the wood right out and then you can use it again. I've got four that I've been working with. It's been going well. It is just a case of taking my time, following the lines, just like, uh, just like being a kid, coloring in the lines here, filing in the lines, taking my time and making sure that I do a good a job as I possibly can. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for coming on this journey. Guys, please, please make sure you go in the link below, get yourself some merchandise. We've got some fantastic things. You can get your, uh, your, uh, your Watch My What's It shirt, you can get the, uh, you know, it, uh, the thingamadoo, the thingamadoo? What's the thingamadoo called? Oh yeah, it's called the thingamadoo. Loads of great stuff on the website down below. Phone cases, posters, great stuff. Great way for you to support the channel. I'd be sincerely grateful, as I am about the time that you've given me today. Thank you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us tomorrow on the next episode as we continue on this rapier and we try and make something really, really special. Thank you. Bye-bye.